Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my 6 to 12 week pregnancy update. It is one in one go, so apologies for that because I think I had wanted to do it a bit more often than that, but you'll find out why I'm doing it this way in a minute. So my last one was when I was five weeks pregnant. So what happened after that, about one or two days after, I started to get really bad cramps. It was just really painful. They'd been kind of mild-ish up until then, and I think I'd even said in that last video that they were beginning to subside, but then they just got worse. And it was like a really bad period pain. So much so, I got really worried. So I went to the doctor again, and she said she would refer me for an early pregnancy scan. So the next day I went along and they said it was probably one or two days short of being able to see anything so we could see the sack. Um, so that was good, so it was in the right place for starters because I'd previously been worried about an ectopic pregnancy. So it wasn't the right place, however they couldn't see anything else so we couldn't see the heartbeat or anything. So they asked me to come back in two weeks time. So it kind of, it kind of made me feel better in one way and also I thought maybe that meant I was just uh, maybe it meant I was just before six weeks because I had read that often before six weeks you don't really get to see anything. So that kind of made sense. So I made an appointment to come back in two weeks time, which was just before we went on holiday. So that worked out well, or at least kind of just in time. So then the day after that scan, which at the time I thought was the day I turned six weeks, I went into work and that was the first day that I felt queasy wasn't wasn't awful but it was all day it just felt a bit just felt a bit sickly i was able to eat fine and i remember feeling really hungry like i really wanted my lunch usually i go quite a long time and have my lunch quite late when i'm at work so the afternoon goes quicker but i kind of needed to have it at like 12 or half past 12 and i was just i just really needed to have my sandwich so that basically unfortunately was the beginning of my morning sickness the next day, and that weekend, the Saturday and Sunday, I was so bad. Oh my god, I've never felt that sick. It, it was just absolutely awful. Like I couldn't do anything. I didn't want to move. I couldn't like drink because I felt so ill. I didn't want to like go upstairs to use the bathroom. I couldn't talk. Like my mum phoned me, and I, I just Matt had to like deal with it. I just couldn't talk or anything just really really horrendous so that was actually the beginning of me having quite a few weeks off work unfortunately there's just no way that I could have gone in and I didn't realize bef before it's really stupid now but I didn't realize you hear about morning sickness and you think that's what it is but no you know it's quite common if you feel sick and you're pregnant for that for that feeling to last all day which in my case it did so sorry if I look down every so often because I have got a little notebook here to remind myself of what happened when. So as I say, yes, yeah, so six weeks, that's when the sickness began. And then during that time, I probably noticed my cramps lessening and I didn't have them as bad as that day that I went to the doctors. So that was a good thing. And I think I probably started to notice I felt a bit tired then. And at six weeks, the baby is only the size of a sweet pea. So it's really small. And then next came seven weeks. Now at seven weeks, that was the week I saw the midwife for the first appointment. We were there just under an hour. Matt came with me, which was good because there's quite a lot of information that they just kind of, she was just kind of like blurting out all this information is quite a lot to take on. So I was glad Matt was there to kind of have an extra pair of ears so we could kind of remember all what she was saying. And just a tip for you, like she found it really difficult to take my blood and then I did the urine test and it was obviously quite concentrated and she said that's probably why she couldn't get my blood easily because I hadn't been drinking enough. So I have been trying since then to drink a lot of water because you're meant to drink more water than usual anyway when you're pregnant. A few days later is when I went back for my repeat scan. So on that scan, they actually dated the baby at seven weeks, five days, which kind of tallied up with what I thought was the first one where I thought I maybe wasn't quite six weeks. That kind of made sense because I would have been five weeks, five days because it was exactly two weeks in between them. And we saw the heartbeat. It was crazy. I've been on, this, on the monitor. It just looks like a little funny shape. And then you see something in the middle of that shape, like 
pumping away, moving, and that is the heart. So it was it was quite crazy, quite surreal, obviously, because it doesn't look like a baby at that point. But it was nice to see, and obviously it was really, really reassuring. And what we had said, as my mum already knew, so my mum knew and my stepdad just before that first scan, so in the fifth week we told them, and then we were planning on telling Matt's parents we wanted them to be next to be told. But when we had that first scan and um, there was kind of nothing to see, we decided to wait for this next scan to tell Matt's parents. So then we kind of knew a bit more what was going on and we felt better. So that day, seven weeks, five days, we had the scan. We had Matt's parents over and we told them, which was really nice. They actually both said they knew I was pregnant. They said the last time they had seen me, they could tell. I don't know how, maybe it was some kind of pregnancy glow that I get spoken about. And then the day after we actually went on holiday only to Cornwall. And I was kind of really worried that I wouldn't be able to enjoy the holiday, but we did. I kind of was managing it a little bit better. So I was trying not to eat kind of greasy or spicy foods, you know, eating kind of biscuits and crackers in the morning, having ginger biscuits, all, all the tips that you may or may not know about that are kind of, we've done a lot of research. So I, was, I wasn't like as bad, but I still wasn't really doing much. Matt was making all the tea. We hadn't done any shopping um, and things like that. I just wasn't really able to do. So at seven weeks, the baby is actually the size of a blueberry. So already kind of, I think is it five weeks? It's like a peppercorn or something, or I can't, I can't remember now, but then it's a sweet pea and then it's a blueberry at seven weeks and the arms and legs are already forming at that early stage. I mean, that's just, and it's so small, so tiny. And it was probably around this time that I started to notice feeling more tired. Obviously I was off work, so I was able to have like a little sleep before Matt got home from work in the day, which was which was quite nice. Obviously a lot of people don't get that, lu lu not a luxury. So some people don't, aren't able to do that. Like if you're lucky in a way to feel well enough to work, it's bad luck because you don't get the sleep, but you know, if you if you don't get sickness, it, that's definitely a good thing. <laughs> it was pretty horrendous. Okay, so then the beginning of eight weeks, as I say, we were on holiday in Cornwall, and eight weeks is when the baby is the size of a raspberry, so it's getting bigger. I still felt sick on holiday, however, I was able to do things. Some days were just worse than others like every day was not the same i would definitely have good days and bad days and times when i felt that perhaps the sickness was lifted and then the next day i'd feel bad and it would come at different times like sometimes the mornings would be bad sometimes the evenings would be and it was it, to be fair that was usually either end of, of the day in particular but there were a couple of bad moments where we you know we had a day out planned and i just couldn't leave the house for a while because i felt so sick or we'd arrived in the car at our destination and i just i just couldn't move like and i was just nibbling on ginger biscuits until i felt better and able to get out of the car um and enjoy the day so i mean so it was still a good holiday and, and i still enjoyed it but it was affected by the sickness and there were a few really bad evenings. I wasn't having tea until quite late um, and I think that was a mistake because then I was feeling really bad. And on holiday, though I, I mean I didn't really notice it but my mum was like oh you keep saying about kind of things that you smell and like nobody else could smell these things so I think my sense of smell definitely was a bit heightened during that period. So at nine weeks, the the baby is the size of an olive um, and it's actually lost its tail by then. So it's beginning to look a little less kind of alien-like because if you've looked at the pictures, it's, it does look a little bit strange. Also at this point, they're beginning to form genitalia. So apparently the chromosomes are already kind of X or Y. So it's the, the sex of the baby is already there, it's already determined, but it's at this point, nine weeks, where the genitalia actually begin to form. So, so nine weeks, still off work. 10 weeks, baby is now a prune, and the size of a prune, which is, is, is getting bigger compared to six weeks, was a sweet pea, that's quite a bit bigger. And at 10 weeks, it officially becomes a, a fetus rather than an embryo, 
which is which is probably quite a big milestone and hitting 10 weeks felt like a milestone for me i haven't really spoken about it much so far in this video but in those early weeks i was so so worried and anxious just kind of terrified that something would happen i was just really really worried and i think it, i kind of definitely held back from obviously i was excited you know we've been trying for a baby it's what we both wanted but I kind of held back because I didn't want to get my hopes up and it just dragged so slowly those those first weeks like you kind of want to get to 12 weeks to have the, the scan and, and see it and know that everything is okay so the weeks leading up to that just went so slow for me and like yeah I just remember thinking oh my god I'm never gonna get to that part however 10 weeks was amazing that was really good double digits so that felt amazing and the sickness was beginning to get better at this point I also started to feel quite bloated my mum said she could kind of see that maybe I had a bit of a pregnancy bump a baby bump but I think it was probably more bloat because you do get bloated due to the pregnancy hormone so it's not just normal bloating it is because you're pregnant but it's not necessarily kind of the uterus or the baby getting, getting bigger it's probably your hormones Oh uh, yeah, and also at that stage, I was beginning to get up in the night for a wee, which is something I never do, but I think it started happening around the 10 week stage. Sorry to cut out there, but my memory just went, so I had to go and delete some previous videos, and I know the position has slightly changed, but as I was saying, I was going on to 12, uh, sorry, 11 weeks, the baby is the size of a lime, and it then has fingers and toes and facial features, which is amazing. I actually returned to work during this week. I did feel a lot better in myself. However, the sickness was still there a little bit during the day, but mainly at night and still quite bad at night, kind of after having tea, it would just come on in the evening and yeah, wouldn't feel great to be honest. I think I did notice my, my belly looking more rounded. I definitely felt uncomfortable actually kind of for the last few weeks I wasn't wearing like jeans and when I went back to work I didn't want to wear my work trousers I just wore kind of the summer trousers that they're quite like stretchy on the waistband kind of quite loose material so that was a lot more comfortable for me also my spots got worse so my spots did improve so my face kind of cleared up but I don't know if it was just the stress of going back to work or wearing makeup again because I hadn't worn it for about five or six weeks so I don't know if it was that or if is the hormones making my spots worse but unfortunately I have had a few breakouts but if that's part of pregnancy then then I will take it that's fine and then finally 12 weeks which is where I am now so really happy again massive milestone we had the pregnancy scan and actually it dated me a few days more than what we thought compared to the last scan that we had when I was seven weeks five days and we saw we saw the baby which was amazing I had to like wriggle around a lot to get the baby into the right position for them to measure the nape of the neck um, for the test for Down syndrome and, and the other two syndromes and I've had the results back for that and it's all low risk so that's really good so it's all positive the baby's there it's baby shaped which is amazing um you know it was quite emotional to see like as soon as she said yes you know we've got a baby with a heartbeat i was just oh, like a huge sigh of relief and since then i've definitely gotten more like excited i can't really concentrate on work um because all i'm doing is like reading things and watching youtube videos and writing lists of what i need and i'm sure that will kind of that will wear off and i'll get back to like normal because i've still got a long way to go yet but yeah i'm really happy still do have a few kind of nerves but really happy so i'm on 12 weeks the baby is the size of a plum we've told more family and yes feeling really positive so thank you so much for watching i've kind of rambled and spoken really fast because there was a lot to fit in but Hopefully you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye.